And lots of developments out of Tallahassee with the state's new legislative session now underway. And it comes as Governor DeSantis laid out his agenda for the year in his State of the State speech just moments ago. Local 10's Glenna Milberg has traveled to Tallahassee for the week and joins us now live. Glenna, what did the governor have to say? A lot, Janice, and a lot that a lot of people have already heard, and you'll hear some of that in just a minute. The, that speech actually just wrapped up. You can see everybody coming out of the House Gallery for that. There is so much on the plate for South Florida in the next 60 days of session now that it has officially launched. 3,000 bills plus, most of those will never be heard, a budget flush with money. And so this governor laid out his agenda in this speech, a little less than an hour long today, speaking to lawmakers and speaking to the people of Florida. But when you hear it, you'll see, it sounds like he was speaking to a national audience. Together, we have made Florida the freest state in these United States. In Florida, we have protected the right of our citizens to earn a living, provided our businesses with the ability to prosper, fought back against unconstitutional federal mandates, and ensured our kids have the opportunity to thrive. Florida has become the escape hatch for those chafing under authoritarian, arbitrary, and seemingly never-ending mandates and restrictions. Even today, across the nation, we see students denied an education due to reckless, politically motivated school closures, workers denied employment due to heavy-handed mandates, and Americans denied freedoms due to a coercive biomedical apparatus. So that was just a small portion of the speech. It came after a lot of much more opening ceremonial procedure in the House and Senate this morning. A lot of applause and a lot of hugs between the lawmakers, a lot of flowers, a lot of smiles. We'll see how long that's going to last as the House and the Senate start to take up really big and some controversial issues, redistricting, drawing the lines of congressional and lawmakers districts that's going to be a very big deal this session and then there's going to be what the governor wants to do tightening election laws education laws a lot of covid related laws in fact the abortion bills were just filed this morning we're going to take a look at the fine print in that uh, there are some bills tightening condo and condo association laws in the wake of the collapse in Surfside. In fact, this morning, uh, Ray Jadala, who was the point person for Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, he was here in the gallery and got a shout out from the governor today. Uh, they'll take up the governor's gas tax holiday, lowering the state gas tax, lowering gas prices. Of course, in a budget flush with money that the governor didn't really mention, because a lot of which comes from the federal relief, COVID relief money in the budget. So a lot, a lot on the plate. And as we come back out live, you can see, uh, unlike last year when the Capitol was closed at this time because of COVID, it is now open to the public. Uh, as you know, the masks are optional here and everywhere in Florida. You can see a lot of people are taking that option. We did see the mayors of both Miami-Dade and Broward are here. You'll see Mayor Udine is in the gallery. Uh, Mayor Levine Cava is outside. You'll hear from both of them as they come to try to get face time for the county's priorities. So much to talk about, and we will have it all for you right here as the week goes on. I'm Glenna Milberg, live in Tallahassee, Local 10 News. No doubt it is going to be a very eventful session, Glenna. And, you know, you had mentioned this, but because of this sort of once in a decade reshuffling, Florida now has 28 uh, U.S. representatives, and that delegation will be 28, which is very important for the election. But how is this reshuffling sort of going to kind of work out, Glenna? Well, the once in a decade redistricting, it, it's kind of like eye glazing to listen to, but it's probably the most important thing for voters because it depends like where you land on your street, who your representative is going to be. So by constitutional law, they've got to be even districts. They've got to have the same number of people. It can't be a partisan thing where you try to jam a majority into each. But of course, it behooves lawmakers to try to do that and horse trade to get their own benefits in their own districts. So you'll see a lot of that going on today. Of course, the Florida legislature is overwhelmingly Republican. There's not a lot of space for Democratic voices. And in fact, uh, a, one of the big deals for uh, portions of Broward and Palm Beach is that three of the districts 
have no representation at all in either or both houses because two representatives and a senator resigned to run for Alcee Hastings' congressional seat and have not been filled yet. So are three empty Democratic seats with an already Republican majority will affect everything, uh, including redistricting. And that's why committee meetings and the minutia and the process in the next 60 days is really important to watch. Ooh, it's like a puzzle putting everything together, Glenna. <laughs> and we know you'll be watching it very closely for us, Glenna. Thank you.